Welcome back to another beautiful, maybe a little bit humid day in Taiwan. We are in the northeastern city of Zhuven, one of Taiwan's most famous cities, and we are right outside of the city's most famous tea house. <laughs> we are starting our day here because we know that this tea house gets extremely busy in the afternoon and can sometimes have hour long wait. So we are here right when they open to make sure that we can have the beautiful view overlooking the coastline. I'm so excited to spend the day here and we are going to eat our way up and down the old historic street. Oh my God. What do you think, Bill? Ready, let's go, it looks beautiful. And he's probably hungry because he's always hungry. <laughs> One of the hosts here at the restaurant just showed us how everything worked and it was very fast and very complicated. There was pouring in one thing, pouring in another thing, and everything was heated up. Okay. Six times 20 seconds. Yeah. Here. Oh no, then here. It's hard to work inside two times 13 two seconds. Time. This here. This is for the drink. And then drinking. Yes. And now I finally get to try my Alisan Ulan tea, which we've been to Alisan, so it's kind of funny to have it come literally full circle around Taiwan and try it here now. <laughs> The oolong tea here smells so different than oolong tea back home. It's more like a jasmine meets oolong tea. You get a little bit of scent of oolong, but you also get very strong floral notes, which I find really interesting. Like, tea is totally different here than back home. And so much smoother. This is a tea that needs no sugar. It needs no milk is just delicious smooth tea in this tiny little cup <laughs> that I get to use over and over and over. <laughs> when she was making it, the tea leaves after 20 seconds go from these tiny little tea leaves to boom, these huge pieces in the cup. We also get a number of different snacks that come with this tea, but I'm gonna have to make another cup in order to enjoy my snacks. See if I do it right, I won't. I guarantee I will do this wrong. She'll probably rush over and take over. <laughs> All right, I think she already did the hard part by like blooming the tea leaves and warming everything up. So I think all I have to do is pour some hot water and then we let it sit for 20 seconds. Do, do, I, do I count it? Now we pour it into the drinking pot. I'm not sure whether I need to let that sit. I think now I can pour it and drink it. Okay, we're gonna start with the thing that I sort of recognize. The sesame cracker wafer. And I can only eat half of each of these so that Bill can try them. Tastes like sesame, I don't know what else to say. Tastes exactly like eating a bunch of sesame seeds, it's good. Then I can have a sip of tea. We're not gonna try all of these, so the last one that we'll try is a giant question mark. I have no idea what this is. It's kind of hard to stab with the little toothpick thing that they gave me. I have no idea what this one is. Maybe dried fruit? It looks like it's covered in a powdered sugar. <laughs> it has a seat. <laughs> that was super graceful. <laughs> so it's definitely some kind of fruit with a pit in the center. I don't even know what it tasted like. Maybe a plum of some kind? That would be my guess. So if you know what that is, uh, maybe let us know below what I ate. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it was really tasty though. I really liked it. It tastes like a really hard sweet plum with a center. So maybe it's a dried plum. I really have no idea. More tea. I went a little bit boring on this. I ordered milk tea, which I've been really enjoying the milk teas all over Taiwan. Tea in general here is supposed to be really good, so I thought I would just give it a go. It's got a nice big pitcher of it. It's really good. It's nice and smooth. It's actually a little bit less sweet than some of the other milk teas I've had, but it's delicious. The company's not so bad either. Oh my gosh, all that came out? That's amazing. That was like clowns coming out of a clown car. <laughs> well, that was really good. 
<laughs> it's so hard to go down the stairs and talk. <laughs> if you've never tried it, it's challenging. <laughs> and this town has a lot of stairs, it seems. That was really fun. I'm so glad that we got there right when they opened so we were able to have one of the tables that has one of the best views. Now we're headed back down the stairs to take a look in a historic theater that I think has opened up while we were enjoying our tea. So far the town is really cool. Quite busy though. This is the entrance to the Shenping Theater. It is just down the stairs from the tea house that we started our day at. It dates back to 1934, but it has been reconstructed a number of times. Based on the photos I've seen, this is not like a normal stage that's at the front. So I'm really curious to see this in person. This is Champagne Theater's original movie projector. Well, the theater was set up sort of like a stage theater that I'm used to. When they used to have performances here, back in Jufin's heyday, people would even stand in the aisle so you could get 600 people standing and sitting inside of that theater. They also have an old-timey concession stand and they have some sort of historical perspectives showing on the theater in front. So if you visit, you also get sort of a built-in movie experience, which is really cool. Fantastic English explanations here as well. So if you're in Jufin, it's free. Don't miss Shenping Theater just down the stairs from the most famous tea house in all of Jufin. All right, time for us to hit the old streets and get some snacks. We ask ourselves this question all the dang time. Hey Bill, what day is today? I think Wednesday. I told you, we don't even know for sure. Travel problems. <laughs> the staircase that the tea house is on and this is not very busy but it is really early on in the day it's only about noon right now so if you're coming to Jufen know it gets super super busy later on in the afternoon we actually came here when we first arrived last night and we wanted to film but it was impossibly busy I mean it was so crowded <laughs> There's no way we could do it, so we decided to come back this morning when hopefully it's less crowded, and I think our plan worked. If you start at the bottom of the stairs and go all the way up past the tea house and turn right, this is the view that you're greeted with from a little observation platform. It's absolutely beautiful, very similar to the view that we had for tea. I mean, I could stand here and just look at the view for hours. It's beautiful. This is also a fantastic spot for a sunset that you'll be sharing it with many other people. There are, are so many shops lining the street. There are people trying to give away oolong tea samples, there's souvenir shops. Even Monk's got a shop too. There's all sorts of food. If you need to do some shopping while you're here or some eating, this is a fantastic street to go up and down. What? This. It also is really busy and super picturesque. So you might have to like elbow your way into some of the best photograph spots or best video spots. Or just find a little alley like I just did. Okay. Not like the most picturesque to be looking at, but it's kind of cool behind me with all the people going by. This place is really starting to pick up. <laughs> Just give it a couple hours, it's going to be a madhouse. The smells coming out of this place are spectacular. Really, really strong almond. All right, we found our first food stop. This place has a nice line and it sounds really interesting. It looks like it's a crepe with shaved peanuts or toffee or something and then ice cream and cilantro in the middle and this might be like my dream dessert. I'm super excited. Here's what you need to know before I go ahead and try it. The outside wrapper is impossibly thin and you can see the peanuts through it. It looks amazing. It also smells super peanutty. We had three choices of ice cream. There was taro, pineapple, and peanut. We went peanut so it'd be peanut all the way through. 
I'm so excited. <laughs> Will this beat my other favorite ice cream dessert from here in Taiwan? Oh my god. Cilantro, peanuts, peanut ice cream, a crepe on the outside. If I was to design my favorite dessert, this might be it. Is it better than the fried ice cream I had the other day? Boy. I'm gonna call it a tie. They're both super, super good. Mm. It's like an ice cream dumpling or a, an ice cream spring roll. It's just, there's nothing like it. It's great. That is definitely something to try if you come here. So, so good. There's a competitor. Uh oh. People enter the old street. Including all tour buses, every last one of them. <laughs> so very many tour groups. <laughs> in fact, it's pretty crowded right now and I don't think that there's a tour group. Look at all the people behind us. We have to go back in because we only ate that amazing ice cream peanut concoction thing. We gotta go back through. <laughs> But that's kind of the thing to do when you visit Jupin, is to wander up and down the old street and shop a little and eat a little and then shop a little more, have some tea and then shop and eat and that's what we're doing. Lucky Bill. Well, you like the eating part. All right, we're going back in. And we're gonna have some shrimp balls. It's like the first place that you come to and there's been a constant line here and they're making them sort of out on the street. So we decided we better have something that's not a dessert today. So these are some shrimp balls. There's cabbage in them and shrimp and my knowledge ends there. They're also coated completely in a breading and then deep fried. They're covered in what smells like a sweet and sour sauce and served with some pickled vegetables and they look pretty amazing. So let's see what we want. Hot, 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 hot. Mm. I can now confirm it's mainly a cabbage and onion mix on the inside and then the breadcrumbs on the outside. I thought there might be rice in it, but I don't see any and I don't taste any. It's delicious. This is a fantastic street food. I have no idea what these are called, but I kind of want to eat them again. They're amazing. We only got two, one for each of us. Might have been a mistake. We get to see things from the other direction now. So this is walking back from the start sort of to the end, more, more the traditional start toward the traditional end. I would actually recommend walking through here in both directions because you see different things each way that you go through. Walking through one way, you might notice some shops, some decorations, and walking through the other way, you'll notice completely different things. Along with making sure that you come here early and are gone by like 3 p.m., unless you really enjoy crowds. If crowds are your thing, start at 3 p.m. and stay until things close around 7. This is back at the peanut ice cream place. Like I said, always a line. Always. We bought a snack that we're gonna eat in a minute or two, but while we were buying the snack, <laughs> I found myself standing in line for something. I wonder what it is. I should send Bill on a scouting mission. Bill, go find out what this is. All right, we stood in line for I still don't know what this is. But since we were in line and it was such a long line and they were busy making things in the back, we knew we had to try this. Whatever it was, it seems like it's going to be amazing. But it just feels like a bag of mush. 
don't. So it's going to be great. It's squishy. I have no idea. I don't even know how to describe this. I'm not sure how to eat it. Okay, it feels like a squishy cookie dough. Like a super squishy cookie dough. And it smells like bread dough that hasn't been cooked. <laughs> this might be one of the stranger things that we have tried. All right. Well, I don't think it's going to be spicy, so I don't know why I'm scared to try it. So they seem to have several flavors. I pointed to a chicken vegetable one, which they were out of, and he handed me a red bean paste one. <laughs> That's just the way it goes sometimes. The texture is really, really, really springy. <laughs> so it kind of bounces. The red bean paste in the middle is really nice. I think the outside might be taro. And when we first started recording here, there was nobody coming up and down the stairs. I'm not really sure what I think of this. It's not my favorite thing that I've had in Taiwan. My least favorite is still stinky tofu. Stinky tofu is stinky. This is much, much better than that. It's just not my favorite. It's a little bit too doughy for me. Let's see what Bill thinks. It's definitely spongy in texture. Let's give it a try. I think what it is is a mochi dumpling with red bean paste in the middle. It's also not my favorite thing. It's not very strong in flavor. And maybe that's a little like a lot of the things we're trying in Taiwan. We have had so many things filled with flavor in Taiwan. Live, live. What I mean by that is the flavors are very subtle and that's typical of the desserts that we've tried. They're not very strong, sweet, nor salty. They're just a little bit of each. And that's true with this one too. Something that we haven't really talked about yet is the fact that Jufin originally was a gold mining town. This town in its heyday, at its highest, had 60,000 people who lived here. And then mining ran its course and the town sort of ran its course along with the gold rush ending. For a long time, the town seemed like it was dying, but then it sort of came back to life with tourism. There was a movie that popularized Jupin because it was filmed here. And so everybody started coming here. And then the movie Spirited Away came out and it was rumored that it was inspired by this town but it actually wasn't. And the tourists came back in droves and now it is a thriving tourist scene. I love that we found something though that was a nod to its original heyday back when it was a gold rush town. We found a minor pie, sort of like how we had the pies that the loggers had back in Fenchihu. Here we had mining pies. They're a smaller version of the original, they told us. So Bill's gonna try this one. It has pork floss in it, which we've been eating all over Taiwan. That's a brand new thing to us. Gold miner pie. Here goes. I need some water. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> I needed some water before I had this. I probably should have just had it. But anyway, so the pie is pork floss and it's pre made. So these are not fresh. They were packaged and they had a desiccant in the package. So clearly they're meant for being on the shelf. Back in the day, I'm sure, of course, they were made fresh. So that's a little bit different than the ones we had in Fenchihu. This is lighter, I would say, and also just a little bit sweet. So there's the pork floss in there, which adds a little bit of saltiness. There's raisins in there. Are there? Yeah. Okay, I haven't come to the raisins yet. Heather tells me there's raisins in here. Don't know how she learned this fact. There are raisins in here, and that would add some sweetness, as well as the sesame seeds on top. It's actually really good. But dry? A little bit dry if you've not had any water in a while, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of like savory things in between two doughy crackers. It really is quite a good snack. I really like it. Also, um, making YouTube food videos might be like one of my favorite things to do. By the way, just so I don't get yelled at in the comments, the author himself has come out and said that Spirited Away is not based on Jufin. It's just some wild coincidence that some of the places here feel like they're a little bit like in the movie, which we have seen and we sort of agree with. But apparently it's just a wild coincidence. I'll link below the author interview. Yeah. Well, it's 
constantly pouring out, but we've maybe saved the best <laughs> for the rain. I'm definitely getting rained on. Something that we haven't tried yet in Taiwan are Taiwanese meatballs. These are super thin dough with a meat filling and it just started raining outside. So this is the perfect time to try these. <laughs> it smells super garlicky and the sauce looks amazing. The one that we're trying is from a Red Vinos Taiwanese meatballs and they claim to be the first Red Vinos Taiwanese meatball. I don't even know what that means but I'm super curious to try it. I can't figure out how to eat it. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab some of the outside and I guess some of the inside and try to get it to my mouth. How do you eat these? Just get a perfect little bite together. Okay, I have no idea what this filling is. <laughs> All right, here goes a red Taiwanese meatball. I, I don't know what I just ate. It is some kind of ground meat, maybe pork, definitely garlic. It's delicious. It's warm and savory. It tastes so good. This is exactly what you want on a rainy day. Like it's just comfort food. It's absolutely delicious. It reminds me of something that we had way back at the beginning of our trip. We ate at this mystery place where we lined up for food. Soy saucy, oniony, garlic, ooh, garlic. And this is really similar to that. So now I'm wondering if we in fact have had this before. It's so good. I, it's just really hard to eat. Oh my God. Come here. Oh man, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. I'm gonna record Bill trying it because I wanna watch his head explode with how good it is. Not that the pressure's on. I also don't know how to eat this. I think the outside at least feels like it's made of mochi, which means that it's it's just really hard to pull apart to get in your mouth, except in a large chunk. So I've successfully made a huge mess of this. <laughs> oh, it don't go. Like so many things we've tried on this trip, this is like nothing I've ever had before. There's just a little bit of a pickle flavor that complements a slightly spicy pork flavor. And then the outside wrap of the of the dumpling, which is I think mochi. It's a really nice, flavorful little snack. What he means is, it's delicious. We did not have our rain gear with us. I think we're gonna call it a video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.